geolocation is not supported by this browser. Now, depending on, on the, the error condition, I might get a different message. For example, even in Firefox, if I were to refuse to allow the location, it would give me a different error message. It would tell me, eh, permission denied. Or if for some reason I was not able to get position, it would say posi uh, location information is not available. Now, here's something that's cool. Displaying the result in a map. Where are we? Whoops, got a close eye. We go and try it. And there we are. Now, let me let me try to run this on my phone. And we'll see something that's advantageous to a mobile device where this really starts to get fun. All right. All right, I'm clicking the Try It button on my phone. It asks me, do I want to share my location? All right, again, browser is only going to share the, the stuff that you wanted to. Browsers, one of browsers' jobs are to keep you safe. So if someone is asking for your location that you don't want to divulge your location for, it'll first ask you. So I can click share location and notice what we get. And you probably can see this coming. This is where I wish I was in a fancier room with the document camera and all that. This map here just tells me I'm in Elyria. All right? If you look, that's downtown Elyria. Right? Um, that's what it says, downtown. And there's Broad Street and whatever this is. I can't really see. There's EMH. There's like uh, the, the, that, that, that square in downtown, whatever it's called. And, all the government offices. Notice what we got here on the mobile one. The mobile one has us on Abbey Road, all right, because it's supplying a much more precise location. All this guy knows is based on our IP address and the internet service provider we're using and blah, 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 that I'm somewhere in an area, all right. This guy, because it's built for mobile, all right, mobile devices know you carry around with you, all right, is smart enough to know exactly where we were. So this one gives better information about the location, all right. So you can do some of these things on a desktop, but they just become much more meaningful and much more robust when you do it in a mobile environment, all right. Now in terms of how that would be presented on the page, I mean, mm -hmm. would it be something I would have to type in? Just be, or do I just present it in the form of a button? I guess I'm thinking about the, the contextual way I present. Hey, I can see I am on this street or in this town. Uh, how is that, I guess, from a design perspective, presented? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go through a couple more examples. Then, then we'll look at we'll look at the code in more detail. Okay. All right. That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to leave this page up because we're going to need it. And I'm going to. I hope I can find this other page I was looking at earlier today. Alright, 
I'm going to run the demo. And it will show us, again, do we want to share locations? Yes, we do. It will show us using jQuery, which is similar to jQuery mobile. It's, it's a more full-featured one. It's telling us that right now it's cloudy and windy, 7 degrees Celsius, whatever that means, 7 degrees Celsius. Elyria, Ohio. Tomorrow, heavy rain and wind. Or no, not tomorrow, uh, today. All right. Tuesday, also rain. And then it gives the predicted highs and lows temperature wise. I, I see what they're saying. They're saying right now it's not necessarily raining, but it's going to be raining and it's going to be raining some more. <laughs> Where's the arc? Yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah, you need jQuery mobile for. All right. Okay. Now, there are other app, uh, demos with this. Let's see. That was the one I spent most of my time looking at. Let's see if I can find another one to give uh, a contrast. Okay, welcome to our visitors from Olivia, United States. Personalized weather forecast. Okay, here we go. 45 rain, 48 rain, 43 rain, 46 rain, and so on. And then finally enabling a Google map. All right. So let's look at, at some of these code examples. And these examples are all in JavaScript. All right? So we'll go through and we'll look at the JavaScript that does it. And the good news is, is that a lot of the work, a lot of heavy lifting is done for you. So you really don't have to do tons of coding. Let's do the most basic example of simply returning the simply returning the um, latitude and longitude that we're at. So let's go in and let's go in a notepad. just going to keep overwriting the text of this test file. And I'm going to go and open it up in Firefox. And again, there we see the click it. Do we want to share location? Yep. And it will show us our latitude and longitude. All right. So, again, you can't do much with the latitude and longitude, but that is proof that this code knows where we are, at least within some, uh, within some degree of accuracy. All right, let's look at this. There's an on-click, it calls a JavaScript function that says get location. Okay. That JavaScript loca uh, code is here. Let's look at what this JavaScript code does. This first line of code is testing to see whether geolocation
application is enabled in this browser or not. All right. If navigator.geolocation, what that is asking is, hey, does this browser support geolocation? It either does or it doesn't. All right. If it does, then we call this function. If not, we call this function. So let's run this on IE, which we know does not support geolocation. Open with IE. All right. I will try it. And I get geolocation is not supported by this browser. So let's look at the two different code paths these take. This is Firefox. This is IE. Right. When we click the button, it calls, on click calls, get location, which is this function here. I don't like kind of how they've crammed all the code together. I'll put some, some little spaces here. To kind of separate this out. I also think it's a little sloppy to have the JavaScript down here. I typically like to put the JavaScript up in the head section. I think that makes it cleaner. Because this kind of the, the, the JavaScript and the, the HTML are all sort of wrangled together. So, when we click the button, it calls get location. First thing it does is it checks to see, does this browser support geolocation? If it does, we do this. If it doesn't, we do that. Okay. So, in the case of IE, this condition is false. This does not support geolocation. Therefore, we set the inner HTML of X which is our little demo paragraph, to geolocation is not supported by this browser. If it is supported, we call, and on that built-in DOM object, navigator, geolocation, get current position, we call that method, and we give this, and this is what's called the callback function. All right? Sometimes in coding you hear of the term a callback function. What is a callback function? Think of it like when um, you call and leave a message for someone. You know, let's say you called your friend and said, um, Hey, can you um, can you uh, go to the store and and get me a dozen eggs? And when you're done, give me a call. All right, and I'll come by and pick them up. I don't know why you do that. Why wouldn't you just get out get out and get your own eggs? But <laughs> let's say you did something like that. Or or hey, um, can I borrow your hammer? Eh, maybe that's a better one. Give me a call, and then you give your number. Uh, to let me know it's okay to come and get it. All right, maybe that's a more realistic one. In this case, this is a callback function. This name matches this name down here. So what I'm doing is I'm asking the geolocation object that's built in the browser to go out and find my current position. Now, that might take a second. Right? That might not necessarily literally a second, uh, which is like a lifetime in computer terms, right? But that might take a little bit of time to do, depending on the particular device and how this object is figuring out the location. Right? On my phone, it might actually be connecting to a GPS satellite to find out where I am, right? Or some other magic, right? Because if you remember, on my phone, I got a very accurate description of where I was. It showed me I was at Lorraine uh, Lower Community College. It didn't show me that I was merely somewhere in Elyria, right? So every browser has its own way of figuring out where you are, all right? 
This object sort of manages that for you, does the work for you. So when I call this function, get current position, on this object, I have to tell it, once you've figured out where I am, call this function. This is a callback function. Kind of like, once you've found that hammer that I want to borrow, give me a call at such and such. Once you've figured out where I am, after it has set the position, then call this function, show position, which gets passed in a position argument. And then from that, we can pull out of this position that got returned to us, we can pull out the latitude this way and the longitude that way. So, you ask the question of like how do we present this on a page, all right? And I fear this isn't a simple question to answer, all right? We have to sort of build up to that. Our first step is seeing, first of all, the mechanism by which we get our location, all right? We have the latitude and longitude, again, not necessarily useful on its own, but we can maybe feed that to Google's Maps and get a map or something along those lines. So how do we get it? We have a function. We see if it's supported. If it's supported, we call this get current position. So we ask the browser, hey, where are we at? All right. The browser will make sure it's OK for us to, to know that or to, to tell that. It brings up that dialog, share location. And then we give this callback function that says, hey, however long it takes the browser to figure that out, once you have figured out where we are, call this function. All right? This function gets called, and then we can do whatever we want to with that information. In this case, we're just outputting the latitude and longitude. Let's look at the next example, which is the same example as the first one with some error catching. And again, I'm going to put some space here so that we can read this code a little neater. Now, when we call that function, get current position, you know, this code and this code are virtually the same as they were before. There's one slight difference, <coughs> excuse me, in, in this line. We give two callback numbers, all right? We give a callback or callback function. I guess I'm, I'm taking my analogy a little too far. Two callback functions. The first one says, if you succeed in finding your position, browser, call this function. The second one says, if you fail in finding your location, show this function or call this function. So this would be kind of like, um, hey, um, can you find that, that sledgehammer? I need to borrow it. Um, if you got it, give me a call at this number. If you can't find it, call my wife and tell her to stop at the hardware store and pick one up. I guess. I don't know. All right. So we call this get current position and we give a callback for success and we give a callback for failure. So the success works as before. The failure, we look to see exactly why it failed. In other words, did it fail because I said, the user said, no, I don't want to share my location? Did it fail because the browser couldn't figure out where we, where we were at? Maybe the GPS satellite's down or something. Did it fail because it simply took too long to respond? Or did it fail for some other reason? So let's go and save this. And I don't know how we can break this. Oh, I'll just say no, you can't see my location. Not now. Oh. 
I have to save this and refresh it. I would say it didn't give me an error message, but I gotta save it. And let's go and open this up in Firefox. Nope. Hmm. Interesting that it's not calling that error function. Um, it could be, it could be that. Maybe that aspect of it's not supported in Firefox. Let me try it on this on this one. I'll try it on my phone. Do 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 do. All right. And I've already said I want to share location always with this site, so I won't do it. So anyhow, I don't know why, but it doesn't give me the error message. But it clearly does not go and and do that. All right. The last example that we that, that I want to look at is displaying the results in a map. All right, so let's go and let's copy this code in, and let's spend a little bit of time doing this. If you notice, it's not like there's a ton of code here. That's sort of the nice thing. Software development is a lot different than than it used to be. It used to be that like. You build every single application or web page or whatever you want to call it from scratch. You know, you are a craftsman. You, you built everything from scratch every time. But as we know, that's not an efficient way to do things. It's much easier if you use components, right? So in other words, if I was going to build something, I was going to build kids' wagons, let's say. It'd be just better if I just had a whole mess of wheels, a whole mess of bodies, it's a whole mess of handles, and just sort of put them together. I'm not re recreating the wheel, as they say, or reinventing the wheel. I'm just assembling components that have already been made. That's sort of the same idea with software. All right? So let's look at this last one, and we'll look at it quickly because we're running out of time. Uh, but we will look at it uh, in more detail on Wednesday as well as look at the weather example. All right. Share location. I have a feeling I'm having a caching issue. Let me go and save this as something else. Save it as test map. Or I'm forgetting to save it or something. Do I want to share location? Yep. And there we go. Maybe it was working before and it just took longer than I thought. Now let's briefly look at the code that does this and be very excited by the fact that we don't have to do a lot of this. A lot of this is done for us and is provided. All right. So if we look at this, we should see some of the same things that we're familiar with before. All right. We have our get location method that looks to see if geolocation is enabled or not. If it is, it, it calls this function, gives two callback functions, one for good news, one for bad news. All right. Otherwise, it tells me that geolocation is not supported. Now, our show position object though, or I'm sorry, function, looks a little different. All right. What we're doing effectively is, here, is we're combining our latitude and longitude and separating them by a comma. 
into this variable that's called lat line. Then we call this Google API's blah, 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 static map center equals latitude and longitude and zoom equals this. We form the URL for this image. All right. We form it in a JavaScript variable. All right. And then we create an image with that URL and put it in the map holder spot on the page. So the good news is this. The good news is we really didn't have to do anything too difficult on our own. Effectively to do this, we simply called functions that other folks wrote. In other words, we ask the navigator, where are you at? We get back from that a latitude and longitude. We then format that request to the Google API. And it will create for us an image that we can then display on our page, and the result is, is that we get a map. Now, we'll talk more about this on Wednesday, but the idea here is we don't need to know all the ins and outs and the details of how it gets done and so on. We just need to know how to talk to the relevant people. All right? We just need to know how to talk to that geolocation object. We just need to know how to talk to the Google API. And if we can do that, then we can get some good results by using these other services. We'll see the exact same thing with weather. All right? We're not going to, you know, we don't have to write a, a program to scan through weather maps and figure out what it's doing outside. Uh, all we have to do is know how to talk to some web service, all right, something out on the web that does know what the weather is. And all we have to do is make sure that we can connect our page to that weather service, all right. We'll review this example as well as the weather one and whatever other mischief I can come into um, next time. All right? Questions about any of this? Um, one thing that, uh, I mean, I can, uh, I'm a zillion percent behind maps that show where you are. That, mm -hmm. that goes without question in terms of functionality. Uh, the, I guess the, the other area that intrigues me is I have worked with JavaScript that based on the time of day you go to a different style sheet, get a different picture, a different mm -hmm. appearance, color scheme, however you want to say it. But that was based on essentially JavaScript and time. I am intrigued by, since you mentioned location, about script that would uh, alter pictures, colors based on location. And for example, I'll use school colors as a generic example. If I'm in Amherst, perhaps my background is green and gold versus uh, being in Illyria where it's red and black. Um, like I said, I, I worked with different style sheets based on time, but um, I can see not just on a high school perspective, but if I am in uh, Ridgeville, I would get a picture for their pizza shop versus if I'm in Valley City, a, a picture for their pizza shop. Well, if you think of it too, if, again, if, if you're like, let's say, a chain, you know, if you're if you're a Burger King, all right, um, you you would probably want to show the link to the most the, the closest Burger King, you know, the, the one up the road on Abbey, you know, as opposed to one that is somewhere else. So, let's think about that, all right. Uh, let's think about what we'd need to do to do that. All right? And we're going to go down one path, and, and my true colors will come out, all right, when we go down the first path. All right? 